Hello, in this segment we are going to talk about the justice of God, a very crucial trait or attribute of the living God. And on a human level, we talk about justice all the time. We may not use the word, but the concept is there. On any given day, uh, we may talk about um, someone, the way that they have uh, treated us, talked about us, or that sort of thing as being unfair or unjust. Or we might observe someone else um, treating someone unjustly. Um, we also talk about legislation, laws that are just or unjust. And just across the board in, in society, you know, things are either just or unjust. So uh, even, again, on a horizontal level, uh, the concept of justice is pretty central to our experience. And on a vertical level, again, when it comes to our salvation, justice is, is at the core of um, a correct understanding of the atonement and the whole drama of redemption. So I'm um, keen on uh, dealing with this uh, adequately as as I can, but I think this will be a relatively short one. It We sometimes link or equate justice with what is earned uh, or deserved. We speak of pe people getting their just desserts in terms of rewards or punishments, but rewards are not always based upon merit. Sometimes people don't get what they deserve, or they you know, get what they don't deserve is, is injustice. And give me an example. Suppose a loved one of yours is accused falsely of um, some crime, and you go to court, and as you're watching the proceedings, it turns out, lo and behold, the person that has falsely accused your your family member um, they in turn uh, the person that has falsely accused your family member uh, the judge happens to be related to them so long story short this judge knowing the truth that you know your your family member is actually innocent um, it renders a um, guilty verdict, and that is a clear case of injustice, legal injustice, and according to scriptural and biblical categories, justice has a very forensic or legal uh, component to it, so we're very familiar on a visceral level with injustice, and it's um, for that reason, Aristotle defined justice as, quote, giving a, giving a person what is his or her due. What is due may be determined by ethical uh, obligation or by some prior agreement. If a person is punished more severely than his crime deserves, the punishment is unjust. If a person receives a lesser reward than she has earned, then the reward is not just. It's unjust. How then does mercy relate to justice? Mercy and justice are obviously different things, though they are sometimes confused. Mercy occurs when wrongdoers are given less punishment than deserved or greater rewards than they earned. And I think of the classic definition of mercy is being not being given what one deserves and grace is being given what one does not deserve. And Sometimes, and that's going to be my uh, main point here, is we get 
that confused justice and, and mercy. Um, God tempers his justice with mercy throughout scripture. His grace is essentially a kind of mercy. God is gracious to us when he withholds the punishment we deserve and when he rewards our obedience despite the fact that we owe obedience to him and so we do not merit any reward. You know, it, uh, Jesus says in the Gospels that um, after all is said and done and you've obeyed God, it's um, we're all unworthy servants. But we know that the totality of Scripture makes it clear that God delights in um, blessing our obedience uh, abundantly. So mercy is always, and this is crucial, y'all, mercy is always voluntary with God. He is never obligated to be merciful. He reserves the right to exercise his grace according to the good pleasure of his will. Whatever you know, his, his plan is. And quoting from Romans 9.15, he says to Moses, I will have mercy on whomever I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whomever I will have compassion. You know, well, people often complain that God, uh, that because God does not d distribute his grace or mercy equally on all people, he's therefore not fair. We complain that if God pardons one person, he is therefore obligated to pardon everyone. Yet we see clearly in Scripture that God does not treat everyone equally. He revealed himself to Abraham in a way he did not to other pagans in the ancient world. We sometimes forget that when Abram, he was just a rank pagan when living out there and to us, seemingly out of the blue, God whoop, points his finger uh, and there's nothing special about Abram himself as God sovereignly in his grace chose Abram um, out of this very pagan environment. Um, and then he is now the father of the, the faithful. So, um, he graciously, similarly, he graciously appeared to Paul in a way that he did not appear to Judas Iscariot. Uh, another example would be, you know, you think of the sins of Peter and of Judas, and um, I, I know that Judas's was more severe, but at the core, both Peter and Judas betrayed Jesus. Um, but we know they have drastically different consequences in their lives. We think of um, when Jesus was talking to Peter beforehand, he said, Peter, I pray for you. And when you have been restored, um, attend your sheep. So, Paul received grace from God. Judas Iscariot received what? Justice. Mercy and grace. Uh, this, is, this is key, y'all. Mercy and grace are forms of non-justice, but they are not acts of injustice. If Judas's punishment was more severe than he deserved, then he would have something about which to complain. Paul received grace, but this does not require that Judas also receive grace. If grace, this is key, please y'all, if grace is required, 
from God. If God is obligated to be gracious, if God is obligated to be merciful, then we are no longer speaking of grace, we're no longer speaking of mercy, but of justice. Now, to illustrate that, I got this rough diagram, okay? See if I can put this up on the screen so you can see it all right. All right okay, so in the middle, you have justice. Okay, everything that would be the character of God and everything in the world that is just and his just dealings with people, his expressions of justice. Okay, and then everything outside in these, this concentric circle, which I have bifurcated, um, uh, labeled this out, outside circle, non-justice okay now both sides are non-justice but on this side you'll notice that that form of non-justice is what injustice now injustice is wrong it's bad okay it's contrary to god's law and his character injustice God can never, ever be unjust or unjust. But note that in the same category of non-justice, you have what? Mercy and grace. So, you, in um, under the category of non-justice, you have both injustice but then you also have mercy and grace. If, if, God, if God shows mercy and grace to someone, that means that he's not showing justice to them. All right? He's, um, but is, if he does not display mercy and grace to someone is he being unjust no what that person is getting getting is justice you follow me we have tended to presume upon the graciousness of grace and the mercifulness of mercy and so that we have been confused in our heads um, expecting that mercy and grace are in the category of justice that is something that's something that we deserve but we know better than that you know in our more lucid moments but all of us including myself have a tendency to to do this God is never unjust, but there are forms of non-justice. There's injustice, which God never does, but when he displays mercy and grace to us, that means that we're not getting justice, okay? But when the person who's not been given mercy and grace, they're being given justice, not injustice, okay? And the last thing that we should ever pray for is that God would pour out upon us his justice because that would send us all to hell if we got what we deserved, truthfully. Do you, do you believe that? Because that is that really is the truth. Okay, I'm going to toss that away. All right, almost done. Biblically, justice is defined in terms of righteousness. When God is just, he is doing what is right. Abraham asked God a rhetorical question that can only have one obvious answer. 
in Genesis 18.25, Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? And likewise, the Apostle Paul raised a similar rhetorical question in Romans 9.14. What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with God? Certainly not! Three closing points. One, justice is given, is, excuse me, justice is giving what is due. Two, biblical justice is linked to righteousness, to doing what is right. Three, injustice is outside the category of justice and is a violation of justice. Mercy is also outside the category of justice but is not a violation of justice, as we saw in the diagram. Okay, let's pray. Uh, dear Father, our Holy Abba, thank you that you have not treated us as we deserve, that is, in your justice. that you have given to us your mercy and grace. And we bow before you and praise you and thank you and will for all eternity for the mercifulness of your mercy and the graciousness of your, your grace. And thank you. Thank you that Christ became cursed for us and that your righteous justice uh, was poured out upon him so that we might be justified and that you might remain holy in the way that you justify us because you put that sin upon Christ and it was punished. We praise it that you are a God of justice and that you care about the injustice in the world. May we mirror you in that regard for Jesus' sake. Amen.